So today we will start to chapter 11, survival analysis and sensor data. And uh, it is about survival analysis and sensor data, but how? So uh, the thing is about the time, like when the event occurs and which one we should take into the analysis or which one we should censor it or which one is which one or, and it goes like that. So the thing is that time until an event occurs. And this can be a medical study. So it is survival analysis. So we can directly take it, uh, the survival. So it might be a medical study, like uh, a patient to be alive or die at some point. And uh, in this example, the, uh, there are patients that are treated for cancer and our time for this study is five years, for example. But uh, this does not have to be a, a medical study. It can be a churn analysis. So it might be a, a it might be about a subscription to a service and a company would like to know uh, whether a customer would cancel um, his or her subscription or when it would be. So it's another example or um, we might want to model a person's weight as a function of some covariates. Uh, the difference between them so here, the first one, we have a time limit to censor, and uh, it's a medical example. Uh, for this one, it is still time dependent because um, we need to select a, um, a time. So uh, we can say that until this time, I mean, in this time interval, uh, the the customer can be can cancel the subscription, might cancel the subscription. So we have a time limit to censor. So even though I say that time dependent, it does not have to be. It depends on the um, it depends on what you want to do. So there is a possibility that it does not have to be time dependent. So maybe the limiting factor is weight, for for example, for this model. So we can have a weight interval and we can uh, censor depending on the weight. So after a uh, weight limit, we will just censor the uh, patients or observations and it goes like that. So we said that uh, the survival time, and we will see it as T, and it's also called as failure time or event time, so this does, does not have to be uh, being alive, uh, so it might be just an event, it might be a failure, or it might be a success even, so it's just the event. And we will have the censoring time, so this is uh, that we take the observation out of the study. So it means that we just censor them. Um, yes, but it also depends. Maybe our study time is over, so we will not continue to observe the maybe patients or maybe the observations. We just stop uh, continuing the experiment until some time, maybe. And uh, we cannot know what happens after that limit passes. And, or we just uh, take it out of the study. Maybe we lost contact to a patient and it goes like that. So we will have a random variable Y and it might be the survival time or the censoring time but we will take the minimum one. So it means that uh, we have a time, let's assume that we have a timeline and we have an observation on this time. And if the event 
happens bef before that time, like let's continue with the definition, maybe it's better. Um, if the event occurs before censoring, and this censoring means like time limit or weight limit, before the censor, if the event occurs, we will take it as T. So when we think as a timeline or a weight line, as our previous examples, it means that the T will be smaller than C. So survival time will be smaller than censoring time, and we will take the minimum of those two. So if event occurs before censoring, we will observe the true survival time. Or if censoring occurs before event, so maybe we will have the time limit and we will observe that time limit before the event happens. So in that case, sorry for that. In that case, we will uh, take censoring time. And yes, um, or maybe we will just take a sample out of the study before the time limit or weight limit or any limit, then we it means that we censored, so we will take the censoring time. So here we can see an example, I just found it on Google, and these are our tests, or we can say that these are the observations, and here we have the uh, timeline. And let's say that this line here is end of the study or uh, weight limit, like the weight would go from one to three, blah, 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 until a limit. Or we can just call this as a timeline. And here the event does not have to be something positive, something negative by the meaning. So it does not have to be a death or it can be a failure or it can be a success but here we have the uh, failure as our example so in our timeline maybe we are interested in the failures and maybe these are the failure happens these are the events so we can take them as our survival times and here might be the since this is the end of the study and before the failure we reach this limit this means that from now on we did not observe the event so this is censored maybe just the next time unit maybe it it will fail also but since it is out of our study study timeline um we will we cannot include it because uh, it passed the censoring threshold and we don't know what happens. So it might fail, it might not, we don't know. And uh, just like the random variable y here, we have a status indicator as the small delta. And it means that if um, survival time is smaller than or equals to uh, censoring time, we will take the status as one. And if censoring time, censoring occurs before the event happens, then we will take the status indicator as zero. So uh, we will have these y and delta pairs, and we will have as much as a number of our observations. So if we have n observations, we will have n number of these pairs. And here we have an example for that as well. So let's assume that we have four patients and the first and the third patients um, for these, I mean, for the first and the third patients, we observe the uh, event. So um, if they are patients, maybe they die before the censoring limit or maybe their disease relapsed. Um, I mean, these are the examples. So we will uh, take survival time for 
these two patients. And let's say that second patient, patient was alive when the study ended. Um, this means that even though, let's say, the next day after the study time ended, he died or something happened, since the study is already ended, it is censored. So uh, for the random variable y, we will take uh, censoring time. And for the patient four, maybe we just dropped them out of the study, or maybe we just lost the follow-up, maybe we lost the contact. So we don't know what happens and we cannot not follow them anymore. So uh, we will take censoring time for that one as well. So when we remember the status indicator and our n number of pairs, we can say that for the first patient, we will take survival time T, T1. For the third patient as well, we will do the same, T3. And for second patient, we will take censoring time C2. And for the fourth patient, we will take C4. And for the status indicator, since um, for patients one and three, we observe the death or survival time earlier than censoring, we will take uh, status, take their status as uh, one. But for second and fourth patients, since they are, uh, I mean, fourth patient is out of the study and second patient reached the end of the study, uh, they are censored. So we will take the smaller value again because censoring happens before the event. So we will take the minimum of those and we will take censoring time. So uh, status indicator will be zero. And here we can observe them as, I suppose I can close this, sorry for that. Uh, we will, uh, we can also say that here we have the four patients and we can say that this is the, the I mean, X axis, we have the time in days. And here is the uh, study time limit. So let's assume that we have a five year study, then this is the end of the five year study. But for here, maybe uh, 350 days or something like that is um, the time interval for the study. And we can say that the first patient uh, maybe died or maybe the maybe their um, disease relapsed on uh, on the day 300. So here the uh, event happened. And because of this, Y1 is when the event happened. So this is maybe 300. And since event happened before the censoring time, we will take the status indicator as one because time um, survival time, I mean, the event time occurred earlier than the censoring time. Then for the second patient, um, maybe they lived until the end of the study and we don't know what happens after that. So maybe he continued to live or maybe he died, we don't know. Um, but since our study ended here, we will take um, the random variable y as censoring time instead of survival time. And since the status of the patient is censored, we will take zero because um, censoring time is reached before the event occurs. And for the third, the same happens as the first patient, but maybe time t that event happens, maybe it was 150, 50th day. So that's why this t3 is different than t1. And for um, fourth patient, we have lost contact maybe, or we dropped out of 
we dropped the patient out of the study because of some stuff. I don't know. Maybe um, they were they were very sick and we needed to drop them out of the study. So they are censored from now on and we will take C4 uh, as it is censored and maybe we can take the time as 250, but still it is censored. And the status is zero because censoring happened before uh, event, yeah, before event occurs. And then when we looked at censoring closer, more close, closer, anyways, uh, we need to think why we do the censoring. So if we uh, drop a patient out of the study, why we drop them out of the study, it is important. Why? Because let's assume that we dropped the patient out of the study because um, the patient was very sick. So uh, maybe they were not able to continue the study anymore. And we um, dropped them out of the study. But in this case, since we dropped uh, people who are very sick, now we have healthier patients in our um, in our experiment set. So uh, this way, healthier samples and healthier results. So this way we can overestimate the survival time because we removed the very sick ones. So this might uh make our results wrong then um another possibility let's assume that um male people are uh, more likely to be dropped out of the study when they are very sick than uh, very sick female patients so in this case we will have uh, both sick and healthy female patients but maybe help just healthy males. So this can give us a result that uh, male people are healthier than female people. So uh, survival times of male people are higher than female people. But this might be wrong. Why? Because we censored the uh, very sick male patients and we kept very sick female patients so this can I mean we need to be careful when we do censoring because this can affect the results in a bad way maybe so uh, we, we need to be careful but we need to do the censoring independent so the features that we do the censoring should be independent uh, of event or we need to be careful again um, so let's continue and there are different types of censoring so we will use mostly the right censoring so it is here we see that there is an end time and start time and there are samples. And uh, when this um, threshold is passed, the samples are, or subjects, are censored from now on. So we don't know and we don't care what happens to them. So this means that the event, so we censor the events occurs after the observed times. Yeah. So we uh, censor the right part of the threshold and time. And here in this example, uh, the red crosses shows that event occurred and here the events occurred. And the gray dot is 
no event, so nothing happened until uh, the end time of the study. So we mostly see the right sensor one, but there are other types of the sensoring as well. So uh, there is also like left censored one. So here again, we have uh, two limits, like, like a time limit, a start time or an end time, or if we use a, a weight limit, maybe there is a um, start weight and end weight, like minimum weight and maximum weight. Uh, so for this one, um, we can also censor the left parts. So if event occurs before the start time, we need to censor it because it is out of our uh, time limit of the study. Um, or maybe for the weight, if a subject has a, a lower weight than the minimum weight, then we will just censor uh, that patient. So this is also, I mean, this is the left censoring. Also, there is interval censoring um, that we look for an interval. Um, and we don't know the exact event time, but we need uh, we need to know that it falls in some time interval. This is a little bit confusing confusing for me, but uh, I mean for this part, I'm not sure. But for um, let's assume that it's a study of pregnancy duration, and uh, we expect the birth to happen like nearly the end of the study so maybe between uh, eight and ninth months and if uh, if it is an early birth then maybe we cannot observe it in uh, our birth interval birth time interval and maybe this way we need to censor the early birth cases maybe or here it mostly looks like in this time interval no event happens and here the event happens so um, maybe this is not a good example to show that um, but Yeah, I suppose, yeah, maybe in, for interval um, censoring might be like we can censor the events happened in the interval or maybe out of the interval as well. So I'm not sure about it. Uh, there are also some other types of uh, censoring but this is not the scope and we mostly focus on right censoring so i will pass but just now that interval censoring right you say it's used on the study of pregnancy duration so what's mm -hmm. the because you say it refers to the setting in which we do not know the exact event type but what is the event was it the pregnancy duration or was it the birth of the baby that's the event what's exactly the event so uh, norm i mean just by this uh, ver these words it would uh -huh. give us the idea that um, the pregnancy start and pregnancy ended when the birth happened but what i meant here is like the pregnancy ends Maybe I just used wrong words, but what I was trying to say that, let's assume that birth happens at the end of the pregnancy. So, uh, yeah. But so, you mean we, we're not sure like actually how long was the pregnancy? Was yeah, be, because some people uh, give birth earlier than normal birth mm -hmm. time and it is not exact, uh, like it's not, exactly like everyone gives birth at exactly after nine months it's not an exact thing so we make studies uh, with 
um, like time intervals. So around these times, the pregnancy will end. But if we have a study um, related to newborns, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but we can have a time interval that, or let's say that we include just early birth cases. So let we have a study about early birth cases. And let's assume that we do not include the births after nine months. So we will have only like seven and eight months. So we can make the um we can make the interval as let's say um like 28 and 32 months birds so exact this interval so we will include them and we will censor the births happened after that after 32 weeks maybe so it also depends on the um, study, in my opinion. I mean, that's what I understood. Okay. Then I continue with the Kaplan Maya survival curve. So here we have a survival uh, function, and we call it ST, and we have it as uh, the event occurs after uh, the observed time. The prob probability of the event occurs after the uh, observed time. And yeah, probability of surviving past time t, after time t. And it's a de decreasing function. And um, just like our, just like I mentioned earlier, uh, it isn't. It does not have to be the survival curve. Uh, yeah, I mean, it does not have to be just about the survival. Uh, it can be a customer churn as well. Uh, so in that case, the T will be the time that a customer cancels a ca subscription, and. Uh, ST, the survival curve, will be the probability that a customer cancels later than time T. And it says that larger the value of ST, so uh, the probability of the event that occurs after the observed time will be higher. So it means that the cancellation uh, will be of the cancellation probability of cancellation after time t will be higher and before that time t the customer will cancel less likely so this sentence is what it means i mean if this is higher the probability of surviving after time t is higher so at this before this time probability is less than um yeah less likely so the customer will cancel uh, before time t less likely so this is like just the sense uh, just this sentence is a little bit problematic for me <laughs> but yeah uh, if the st's value is higher then the event probability of event occurring the observed time is also higher and it will change according to the uh, examples and cases and here we will have a brain cancer data set so uh, it is about the survival times for the patients and we have some uh, features here. One is gross tumor volume and the gender and the diagnosis and the location of the tumor and Karnofsky index. And this is um, like the, it shows the health status of a patient. So if it is 
100, it means that the patient is perfectly healthy. And if it is zero, it is like the patient is dead, something like that. And then we have the methods, stereotactic methods as uh, stereotactic radiosurgery or uh, fractionated stereotactic radiotherapy. These are like applied um, like treatment methods, I suppose so. And according to the example, uh, at the end of the study, 53 of the 88 patients were still alive. So from now on, I would like to check the book because uh, after here, we will have some uh, formulas and I just did not want to, to um, copy them. So maybe we can use the book here and we can follow the example here. So, um, so if we take small t uh, as 20, so our observed time is 20 months, and we are looking for the probability of uh, a patient, like survival of a patient after time t, after 20 months. So, when we checked the patients, so at the end of our uh, our at the end of twenty months, uh, forty eight of eighty eight patients were alive, and it is like fifty five percent. But we need to be careful about the censoring because. This means that 40 people um, okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, okay, okay. 48 pe people were alive, okay? And this means that 40 patients died. But 17 of that 40 patients were censored. So um, we cannot know that maybe those 17 would be alive or maybe, um, maybe they really died. We don't know. So this is important to um uh, yeah this part is i mean censoring is important here so um so if we remove those 17 censored ones this means that 80 71 Ah, sorry. Yeah, if we remove 71 from 88 patients, now we will have 71 patients. And we can say that 48 of them are still alive. And it changed the proportion. So uh, that's why we cannot just um, trust the proportion that we obtain at the end. And also there are possibilities that uh, maybe, um, maybe something else happened. Maybe when we censored, the censored patients would survive. So we don't know. That's why we need to work on it more carefully. And here, uh, let's say we have exact like unique death times and here the d1 d2 um until dk because let's assume that we have k unique death times and they are since this is a timeline they are going like growing and uh, d1 is smaller than d2 and dk the uh, biggest 
last time. And QK would be the patients who died at time DK. So the how many patients die at D1 is Q, Q1 would be. And the number of patients um, alive at time, not at time, before, just before DK is RK. So at DK time, RK minus QK people are alive. But just before DK, since QK people did not die yet, we have RK number of alive patients. So, um, so RK is also called as uh, risk patients or risk set because since it is just before DK, so just before a moment uh, that happens, these are risk patients. So some of them will die, so they are risk set. And uh, from here, uh, we have the probability calculation and it is similar to this one. I mean, it's just uh, continuity of that, but um, I mean, it, con it contains that as well. Here, the thing is that it's also written here for the probability things. Uh, if we are talking about two events, and if we are talking about uh, probability of happening one of them, and it is, yeah, it, it can be calculated as the conditional probabilities. So uh, when B happens, we need to multiply probability of B and uh, probability of A when B happened. And also we need to um, consider the probability of that B does not happen. So the complement of B, BC, the probability of that, and probability of event A uh, when B did not happen. So complement of B. So it's just like that. V are checking the probability of T event happens after time DK. For that, we will take it as A happens uh, just after DK minus one. And so just like part B, probability of part B. And also, we need to consider when B, the second event, does not happen. So uh, the complement of the second part is T is smaller than or equals to DK minus one time. And probability of event T to happen uh, after DK when T is smaller or equals to DK minus one. But since the timeline uh, grows, I mean, it increases each time. So the time goes like one, two, three, four, DK minus one and DK. Uh, the, if the T happens after DK, then it has to happen after DK minus one as well. So this is impossible because if T happens before or at time before DK, it cannot happen after DK. So if a person dies today, it cannot die tomorrow. So this part of the equation is zero. So uh, since this, this equals to ST or SDK in this case, 
we can take this part of the equation as SDK. So we have this SDK. Then we can also say that since SDK is T is greater than DK, if this would be DK minus one, it would be T is greater than DK minus one's probability. And here we see that SDK minus one. So we put here SDK minus one. Then if we write SDK minus one in this format, here would be DK minus one and here would be DK minus two and here would be DK minus two. So we would write this equation into here and then this part would be equal to dk minus s dk minus two. And then we would write that in that form and put into that form. And we would have uh, this part multiplying until d1. And we would have d1 here. So here they are just multiplied, 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 multiplied from dk until D1 and the last part is just T is greater than D1. So this is a long formula like this. Then um, we can make an estimation here. So um, probability of uh, T time happens at time T is greater than time DJ. And this time dj, the probability of this, when t is greater than d minus j is given. For this, we have this formula as rj minus qj over rj. And r was the risk set. So just before time dj, people, people alive just before this time and QJ, people who died at this moment. So these are, I mean, this RJ is risk set and QJ are who died. And RJ minus QJ means that who survived of risk set. So this is this kind of proportion or we can also write it as one minus QJ over RJ. It also, it is like uh, one minus who died and who were alive, who died of who, something like that. I suppose, yeah. And since, um, yeah, let's talk about here as well. Since we have this kind of estimation, and since we have this long formula here, and we can change this, this, this j with different k values, and here same as well, and they are all in multiplication, we can write the formula like this. So, uh, survival function, estimation of survival function is uh, the multiplication of from one to K and like one minus QJ over RJ. You can write it like that. And uh, since these times are just goes like one by one, let's assume, uh, and change happen, just uh, it, if it is something at a moment and it changes or it decreases uh, each time one by one, uh, that's why we have a step like um, step like graph, step like plot for that. So let's assume that the first day just one person died. So that's why we will have um, 
And also, let's assume that for some days or for here, for some months, uh, people do not have to die like each month. So we can have the same probability for a while as well. And that's also a reason to have a step like uh, plot here. And yeah, and from here, the log rank will start. Um, is it okay if we end here today? Yeah, that's why I was just going to say okay. we end here, then we will start with the log rank test next week. But before yeah. that, um, anyone else has questions? Yes. Maybe I, I maybe it was so much um, the formulas were maybe I shouldn't um, I think that's fine. It was still the problem. The formula was okay for me mm -hmm. because it was the pro just the probability. Uh, I assume that silence means they do understand. No one has question. Okay. <laughs> then that should be fine. Yeah. But, okay. But it's okay. I think the explanation was adequate for me because I actually don't remember what I have read regarding this chapter. Really? <laughs> yeah, but when you explain it, then things came back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I did, like, after when you're explaining it, I did remember some things that I have read previously. <laughs> so it's <was> good. <laughs> nice. Um, uh, I don't no, have okay. it. I only was thinking, right? Can you just scroll up a bit the previous, the last figure that you show? Uh, not not before the lock leg. Um, the last figure. Yeah. So the dash curve is the standard error bar, right? And the solid yes. one is the survival mm -hmm. curve. Yeah. I was thinking of the same thing. Yes. Yeah. Sorry that I didn't mention that. Uh. So yeah. So yeah. that's just an estimate because I think they start off at zero because everyone should be surviving where you started at least. Yeah. The probability <laughs> should be one. Yes. Yeah. So that's why it is a decreasing curve. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it like... was written, I suppose, at the beginning. And then where I lost it. Maybe here. Yeah, decreasing yeah. function because yeah. we so, lose people one by one, not one yeah. by one, <laughs> some by some. Yeah, some like they should be decreasing. <laughs> it makes mm. sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's all for this week. That mm -hmm. I will see. We will see you guys, each of you, like next week. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. See you next Thank week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>